good afternoon, everybody in Stockholm, uh, in Stockholm, and warm greetings to those that are uh, joining us online. Uh, buenas tardes a quienes nos acompañan en Estocolmo esta tarde, y buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches a aquellos que nos acompañan en línea. Um, so this session will take, play, will take place, place in English and Spanish. Uh, for those wishing to access uh, the simultaneous interpretation channels, please connect through the uh, interact, interact Show app. Um, Uh, esta sesión se llevará a cabo en inglés y español. Para quienes deseen acceder a la interpretación simultánea, los invito a que se conecten a través de la aplicación Interaction. So, welcome everybody to this session, Maximizing the Development Value of Water. My name is Ernenek Duran, uh, Senior Director of Programs and Director of Lazos de Agua for the One Drop Foundation. And I will be uh, the moderator of this session, and I will be also the keynote speaker. So, Can you can you hear me in the in the room? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I, I think we are in a transition mode, uh, right? Because we were full uh, presence before the pandemic. Then we went full virtual, and now we are exploring this new uh, hybrid mode. So please bear with us. Uh, we might have some glitches, but we will make all the, the best the best of this session. So following my opening remarks, uh, I will open the floor to uh, five panelists. Uh, who will present cases supported by tools, methodologies, mechanisms, and evidence that propose innovative uh, ways to increase the social and economic impact of uh, and sustainability of water and sanitation investments. Towards the end, uh, it will be a pleasure to, in to interact with you during the Q&A sessions uh, with, uh, through, uh, please uh, send your questions through the Pathable for those online and here, Uh, in the room, we will do as all days, just raise your hands and we will give you the mic. Um, and at the end, uh, we will have some closing remarks from the from Grisel Medina from the uh, Water National Commission of Mexico. So let's begin. Uh, I will take just a few minutes to do my, my uh, opening remarks. So it is well known that uh, all that the starting point for human development in a society is its access to adequate water, sanitation and hygiene services. But it is, and it is not by accident that in 2010, uh, the United Nations recognized them as a human right. While sustainable access to wash services plays a key role in our socioeconomic development, simple access is not everything. And the challenge of having universal access comes with several additional challenges that, are, that have nothing to do with infrastructure. Before talking about them, let's take a quick look at some of the access challenges that we are still facing today. And as in the previous session of the Focus of the Americas, uh, Sergio was mentioning that uh, we have received very bad news, right? Like uh, things are not good, droughts are increasing. Uh, we have several droughts in, in, in northern parts of Mexico, in the United States. Um, uh, the IPCC report is telling us that uh, if we don't act now, it's, it will be too late or we might be too late. Um, and also, according to the 2020 JMP report on progress on household drinking water and sanitation and hygiene, the world is not on track to achieve SDGs targets 6.1 and 6.2. So at current rates of progress uh, should be mul multiplied by four if we want to achieve uh, universal coverage by 2030. And not surprise, the least developed countries, fragile contexts, rural areas, poor populations, and communities in vulnerable situations will require the most effort. Um, and also rural coverage of safely managed drinking water services has increased faster than urban coverage. The, challenger, the challenge is much greater in, in these settings. So in 2020, rural areas were home to eight out of 10 people who still lacked access to even basic drinking water services. Two thirds of the people lack, lacking basic sanitation services and 92% of the population practicing, practicing open defecation. Um, however, um, I want to emphasize that access is very different from use and use is very different from adoption. Um, if we want people to adequately use and appropriate infrastructure and to adopt adequate hygiene practices, It is not enough to install the right technology or to provide traditional trainings. Uh, for securing sustainable access to wash services and to achieve the full realization of its benefits, 
it is necessary to think about how to solve challenges that are related to inadequate hygiene practices, low levels of payment of water and sanitation services, low connection rates to sewer services when they are available, low use of sanitation facilities, a weak or non-existent wash market, adapting to climate change, inadequate use of infrastructure, inefficient use of resources, and the list can go on. So these challenges, in addition to those of access, represent a huge responsibility for those of us working in the sector, as well as for local stakeholders and people accessing the services, that is the end user. However, these challenges are a source of inspiration and can push us to think outside the box, to think of, about of, a, a, of innovative solutions, tools, and approaches to address them. And that's why we are, we are here today. And as I previously mentioned, and I want to be clear on that, uh, these innovative solutions that will be presented in these cases uh, and that um, are being uh, piloted somewhere, somewhere else in the world have nothing to do with infrastructure or very little. Right? They, they think we know how to do it, but there are some others, other challenges like the one I mentioned that um, are not. So the question is, how can we go further and ensure that today's WASH investments are sustainable and that we maximize the, the potential for social and economic impact? Um, we need to increase collaborations and use, and use and develop inclusive approaches and tools that allow us to better understand the system and interact with various stakeholders. We have learned that sustainable access to wash services is achieved through systemic and innovative models um, in which communities play an active role. They are not simple spectators. Hence the importance of using groundbreaking ideas. So the evidence-based cases from Latin America that panelists will share with us today, um, in which they, and they use, in, in these cases, the users of, of systems are protagonists. And um, as the UN emphasized, and I like this very much, to successfully provide adequate WASH service levels, we need to implement the right systems. And that is institutions appropriately resourced and capable of delivering services and changing behaviors in an appropriate and resilient manner. Arts, for example, can provide valuable spaces for reflection. It can also, it, it, it can also encourage the co-creation of solutions with and by the communities and other, other key stakeholders. Besides needing access, the communities are the ones who make it possible and sustainable. So without further ado, I will now give the floor to Ana Sisa, who, who is joining online through Zoom. Uh, and she is manager of monitoring, evaluation, research, and learning at the Wandrop Foundation. Anna will share with us her experience on how behavior change using social art contributes to, to sustainable access to WASH services in a program that aims to engage 200,000 people in five Latin American countries by the end of 2022. Anna. Thank you, Renee. Can you listen? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, even though I'm virtual. Um, so in your speech, you talked about the importance of behavior change in WASH improvement projects. But what makes a WASH behavior change approach effective, right? What elements increase their chances of success? If you want to maximize the value of investments in WASH, these are important questions to ask, both from a donor's and an implementer's perspective. Well, thankfully, researchers have precisely investigated these questions as part of a systematic review. Um, I don't know if you can support me with the slide um, over there, if it's on. Um, yeah, so these researchers have precisely investigated these questions. Uh, they identified several key effective elements of behavior promotion. Um, and those are in the slides. I don't know if you're able to see them. And if not, I'll just, I'll just continue. Um, but so remember them. <laughs> so one is to understand key behavioral barriers and facilitators. Uh, the second one is to include elements of psychosocial theory to design the intervention. Thank you. Um, uh, the third one, involving the community in various stages. And fourth, for, for community-based approaches, having a facilitator who's part of the community, who is representative of it. And last but not least, going beyond one-way messaging in communication. 
right? These findings were published in 2017, right around the time when the Lasso de Agua program was under design. And Lasso de Agua, like Ernest mentioned, is a WASH program with a strong behavior change component. So this review was very useful for us. And its findings were in fact very aligned with the behavior change approach we were in the midst of cooking. This approach is called Social Art for Behavior Change, or SABC for short. And let me show you how it includes each of these proven effective elements. Next slide, please. I'll illustrate it with this picture. These women live in a village in Mexico, one of the 380 villages where the program intervenes across five countries in Latin America. As part of the SABC approach, they participated in puppet making workshops facilitated by a local artist. And before the workshops in the design phase, formative research informed the artist strategy by revealing the profile of priority groups, such as these women who ought to practice a certain behavior and the behavioral barriers and facilitators that influence whether or not they engage in the behavior. Conducting formative research to inform the design also included elements of psychosocial theory. In particular, we use the integrated behavioral model for WASH by Dre Belbis. Um, and once the behavioral barriers and facilitators were identified, understood, the artist started ideating and prototyping SAVC interventions that would address them alongside community representatives. Right? So the community was involved during the design phase, starting from the formative research and also when testing the interventions. Now, during the workshop implementation, these women crafted puppets. They produced a puppet show from scratch. They presented the show aiming at influencing a particular wash behavior amongst their peers. Uh, so here again, the community was not only involved in participating in the intervention, but some of them were designing and delivering the intervention. These women are part of the community they now influence. They are representative of it. And during the whole process, there's plenty of interpersonal communication in all directions, right? Between the implementer, the participants, all directions. So this process of involving community members and forming leaders of change with art to address behaviors is what the SABC approach is about. In Mexico, there have been more than 30 groups like this one that have created their own puppet show. And puppet making is just one type of SABC intervention carried out. There have been hundreds of interventions of various social art forms, such as uh, short filmmaking, mural making, theater, uh, songwriting, social circus, etc. Now, has this been effective? Next slide, please. Um, various studies have been conducted over the lifespan of the program, which is now in its final year. Uh, in this graph, we can see how the percentage of the population practicing the encouraged behaviors, we call them doers, uh, increased for all four behaviors between baseline and midline. Now, various program efforts complementary to the SABC approach could have contributed together to these behavioral outcomes, right? The CABC approach addresses psychosocial barriers and facilitators such as social norms, social cohesion, while other program efforts take care of contextual and technological barriers, such as improving access to water and sanitation services. Indeed, the SABC approach needs to be embedded in a system strengthening approach, one that holistically can address the different types of behavioral barriers and facilitators that are relevant uh, to the context. We did not conduct an experimental study to examine clear relative attributions uh, for each one of the various uh, interventions of the program because the program is very complex and has many layers of interventions and actors working together, uh, having a synergistic effect. However, to complement these quantitative results, we conducted story-based interviews with participants uh, of SABC interventions to see what changes they have experienced since then. And 78% out of 177 respondents identified hand washing with soap at key moments among the changes they have noticed. So besides creating a sufficiently confident level of attribution for us, uh, these interviews revealed other interesting outcomes, such as changes that transcend the individual and are felt at the household and community level that may suggest changes in social norms, 
to improve dialogue between water users and water user committee members that suggest outcomes such as increased social cohesion and increased trust. And three, increases in self-confidence. For example, some people said they feel more comfortable public speaking or taking the lead in matters of community well-being. So those are just a few examples of outcomes the program has been able to bring about and measure. Uh, we invite you to read our peer-reviewed article uh, that uh, here someone is going to share in the chat for you to see. And um, wait for the findings of the summative evaluation uh, coming up early next year. And so to conclude, the experience of Lazos de Agua suggests that to maximize the likelihood of multiple outcomes in WASH investments, it is key to care deeply about the process, one that is evidence-based, theory-based, community-based and participatory, arts-based and human-centered. That's it for me. Thank you, Ernik. Thank you very much. Um, as you pointed out, uh, it is clear that the process centered uh, of the, on communities is essential to achieve uh, the uh, appropriation of the projects and promote uh, their sustainability. The results that Anna shared with us regarding behavior change uptake are approved of it. And uh, just for you to know, we are right now we are conducting the final uh, uh, line, the final coll data collection to contrast to the midterm and the and the base and the and the mid the midterm and baseline. So with uh, now I want to pass the mic to Yusuke Teraoka from the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, who will be presenting a case about improving the water supply system in a, in a marginalized peri-urban area of Lima, Peru. Yusuke is joining us uh, from Zoom. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning um, from Lima. Yes, um, thank you very much for introducing me. Yes, um, my name is Yusuke uh, from JICA, uh, Japan International Cooperation Agency. Yeah, I'm working in Peru uh, for managing an ongoing project and exploring new projects in the sector of water and sanitation. And today, um, I am going to talking about the um, one last mile water challenge to deliver water underserved and how to reach um, population uh, in Lima. Uh, the next page, please. Um, firstly, uh, let me touch upon geography and the social characteristics of Lima. Uh, this slide shows a snapshot um, of the situation of a water utility of Lima. As known widely, uh, Lima is a capital city of Peru, and uh, uh, its population has the, uh, grown increasingly um, over, the, over the past um, past years, and the population has become around 10 million people. Uh, in addition to this um, concentration of population uh, due to the highly dry climates, uh, the city has been uh, suffered from the um, serious water shortage. Uh, in fact, the precipitation uh, is just six millimeter per year approximately, uh, which ranked the second second driest city in the world in accordance with the uh, World, Bank, uh, World Bank report. Uh, for this reason, uh, set apart, uh, which is the Water Service Agency of Lima, um, has been dedicated uh, with distributing water citizens of, of Lima uh, through developing water infrastructure. And thanks to this effort, uh, now the coverage of water, uh, water service has reached um, 90%. However, uh, the population growth has continued and it's the predominant reason uh, is migration of uh, low income uh, persons from rural areas. Uh, when they leave their hometown and come to Lima, they tend to tend, tend to inhabit uh, in the outskirts city of the city and formed uh, informal settlements. The areas where they live are often located in uh, mountainous areas due to this hard to reach situation, the existing water supply system can't necessarily cover this population and the fact that the population spreads in a scattered manner and that that makes it more difficult for the existing system to uh, provide water with them taking into account the technical and the financial aspects such as affordability or cost efficiency and therefore uh, people without water distribution system are given access to water by tanker truck uh, set up, as a set apart is operating as a social responsibility 
responsibility. And by this means, almost 800,000 people are provided with water. Uh, still, however, still some areas are too difficult to reach even by this approach using tanker truck because of narrow path or the high altitude. As a result, as you remain 90,000 people without safer and continuous access to basic water and service. In addition, Peru, Peru is the most infec infectious country of the COVID-19, and one of the uh, reasons of the widespread of virus is considered this limited access to sanitation. Uh, the next page, please. So in order to tackle this issue, CEDAPAR and JICA and talked with each other and have decided um, with an agreement to carry out this project. Uh, according to our mutual agreements, they, we started the project this year. As a first step, we procured a water treatment purification system to produce um, drinking water. And since in Lima, uh, tap water is not so preferable uh, for drinking, it is very important to ensure the uh, quality of water for drinking. And uh, in order to meet condition, the project procured the installed water purification system, and then uh, the pro they can produce highly uh, qualified water. Uh, then uh, thinking of the situation, and uh, this is how to reach the, uh, it, it is how to carry a big water, water bottles. Uh, then looking at this difficulty of carrying water, we decided to use two liter bags to prepare packing water. The equi equipment such as the purification system and the packing machine was obtained, uh, installed uh, in this April. Uh, and after that, the power started uh, distributing uh, these water bags uh, for the target population. At the same time, we prepared flyers uh, to raise awareness and of hand washing and the importance of better sanitation because cleaner environment was critical uh, in the context of prevention and the minimization of outbreak of COVID-19 or the other infectious diseases. Then we are going to have workshops uh, through webinar to make sure the population uh, make a habit of washing hands. To take a close look at the detail, now we are in the first uh, phase. Uh, we are going to distribute water bags uh, for 4,500 people. After that, Sedapa is going to carry out a water distributing activity in 15,000 persons uh, in three months. Uh, after these uh, seven months, uh, this activity will be uh, maintained and, uh, and scaled in the longer term. The next page, please. As a conclusion, uh, taking into account that, that this project is still going on, I think I could raise some outcomes and uh, some expectations. And firstly, uh, this project has improved the quality of water they use. Uh, the, in addition, uh, it reduced the difficulty uh, of water access. Uh, then they don't need they, to collect and carry heavy water buckets. Um, apart from those, we expect um, that this project will um, bring and contribute uh, to reduction, uh, reduction and the prevention of spread of diseases and uh, through raising awareness activity. And also they uh, expect the decrease in diarrhea or the other um, uh, along with the uh, progress of the project. Thank you very much. This is all my presentation. Thank you very much, Yusuke. Uh, so this is a clear example of how to reach the last mile in a, in a very difficult context in, in Lima, right? So uh, without further ado, I want to give to invite now Gisela, uh, who is uh, joining us from uh, Peru as well. She's uh, the director for Water for People in Peru, and she's joining us today. So please, uh, an applause to, to Gisela, right? Thank you. To all of you present here, buenos días a todos los que se nos unen desde Latinoamérica. Es un gusto para mí compartir este momento con ustedes. It's a pleasure for me sharing this space with you. And I want to start putting in some context about Peru. Um, Peru is a country with nearly 33 million inhabitants. 22% um, of them are uh, rural population. And in that segment, 23% still doesn't have access to safe water, nearly 70% doesn't have access to sanitation, and approximately 15% still 
of population still uh, practices open defecation. Uh, next slide, please. In 2017, the government established that the national regulator is called SUNAS, um, which was at that time was uh, only working with urban utilities, have to have, um, has to be in charge of also rural population, rural providers. It meant that one of the first things they did was to establish the methodology for the calculus of rural tariffs. And that is the number in, the norm was published in July 18. And here's the process we defined for the implementation of the methodology in the districts where Water for People works in Peru. It starts with the capacity building of local stakeholders. Um, we sort of translate the law in terms of uh, building a methodology script in order to explain it to the communities and for local authorities. After that, we plant a geographic division of the districts. We made open calls for, for all the parts who work in the district. We facilitate the team training and prepare the materials needed to inform the local authorities and communities. After that, we started the socialization of the methodology with local governments and with the authorities who are responsible for the provision of rural services and then developing an operational plan. And it makes, it implies making a diagnostic, making an operational annual plan. After that, they estimated an annual budget. And finally, the determination of the rural tariff. And then we, started updating the rural tariff. It meant that uh, we try to put a lot of workshops with the rural organizations. And finally, in an assembly, in the general assembly, with a presentation of nearly most of the users, um, the rural community authorities present the new tariff to the assembly and assembly. And the users finally approve or decide to disapprove the new rural tariff. Next slide, please. Which, of, which are our results so far? First, 96% of the rural communities in Asuncion, Casca, San Reque, which are the districts where we work, um, decided that th their tariffs using the methodology established by SUNAS, where the national average is nearly 39%. 63% of the communities approved their tariffs in general assemblies. In Cascas, um, the average monthly rural tariff increased by 50% with a default rate of less than 10%. Finally, two method methodology scripts tested in territory, used in workshops, and published in collaborative work with SUNAS. Next slide, please. which are some lessons learned when implementing this process. First, um, we, Peru is a territory very complex, not only because of its geography, but also because of the number of rural providers. We have nearly 27,000 of rural providers. And so we need to design a strategy in order to increase the percentage of communities that implement this methodology. And second, um, increasing rural tariffs, reducing the default rate, and creating water service value in rural populations is possible when sharing adequate and relevant information for making decisions. And third, alliances like NGOs and government agencies are relevant and serve as an instrument or sort of facilitator that brings the state closer to its population. Um, in order to improve laws and regulations to develop better services, which is, which are our main objective. Thank you, Gisela. So this is a, a, another great example of how to involve uh, the communities, how to work with local governments uh, to adopt 
tariffs to prom to promote the, adop the, the adoption of, of tariffs and uh, uh, but again community at the center of the intervention right communities at the core of the work that water for people is doing in peru thank you very much gisela now um we will uh go back to our zoom speakers with edgar fajardo who is the water and sanitation and hygiene officer for unicef in guatemala and edgar will present a case on sustainable total sanitation and hygiene as a catalyst in improving water quality and hygiene habits uh, in 22 municipalities in four departments of guatemala please edgar Good morning. Uh, hello. I'm going to present in Spanish. So, uh, es un gusto saludarles. Les saludo a Edgar Fajardo. Y les voy a presentar la experiencia de Satos. Es que agregando valor al agua al nivel de hogar en Guatemala. Maximizando el, el, el desarrollo del agua. Y les hablaré particularmente de la experiencia de Unicef y Socio Hotel de Paz, eh, Adri, Azorech y Acodillo, en 22 municipios afectados por la desnutrición en cuatro departamentos es en Guatemala. Y esta intervención se orienta a mejorar el acceso a servicios de agua, saneamiento y higiene de las familias en 600 comunidades en esa área. Es si tan amable de presentar el, el live, por favor. Es en la, en, muy bien, muchas gracias. Antes quiero comenzar explicándoles qué es ATOR. O saneamiento e higiene total sostenible. El, es una metodología de intervención integral que la lidera la comunidad. Es una evolución de lo que se conoce como CLPS o Santolí. Y en este caso lo que aborda son casi todas las rutas de contaminación fecal oral y que se basa en el cambio de comportamiento colectivo y que genera una activación positiva hacia hábitos que mejoran la calidad de vida y el ambiente en el que viven las personas que no la tienen. O sea, todo es una metodología, como les explicaba, que la lidera la comunidad y que Este, en términos generales, como ustedes ven en ese diagrama, este diagrama lo que hace es mostrar las diferentes rutas de contaminación de las especies hacia un nuevo individuo, hacia un nuevo ente hospedero. Pero casi siempre hemos trabajado en Santolí desde la base del saneamiento, pero no se había abordado tanto el tema de la cantidad de agua ni la calidad del agua términos generales, estos son dos temas que debe abordarse para mejorar o disminuir las rutas de contaminación que se tienen en las personas. Entonces, lo que la metodología busca es activar, además del saneamiento, la higiene, la calidad, en términos de calidad del agua, los diferentes mecanismos relacionados con el tratamiento al agua, el, el saneamiento que vincula básicamente ese saneamiento. Ese sentimiento, no solo también, en, es una mezcla de sentimientos en tanto asco, vergüenza, autoestima y deseo de mejorar de manera colectiva de las comunidades. Por otra parte, se activan eh, las prácticas de lavado de manos con, de una manera apropiada, el fortalecimiento de capacidades que genere empoderamiento en la comunidad y la mejora de la, para el desarrollo de sus proyectos a nivel comunitario. La siguiente, por favor. Entonces, básicamente lo que se hace a nivel comunitario es llevar a las familias a que entiendan o a que explicándoles que a través de este, estos procesos de saneamiento, higiene, agua y, y fortalecimiento de capacidades, ellas son capaces de reflexionar desde su entorno y se busca que vayan cambiando este, sus métodos o mecanismos de, de intervención. La, la siguiente, por favor. Desde la perspectiva de la, del abordaje municipal, se hace para lograr un involucramiento de las autoridades en mejorar la cobertura, coordinar la implementación, priorizar comunidades, presupuestar nuevas intervenciones, certificar comunidades, a manera de que éstas sean libres de contaminación fecal ambiental y que además 
se mejoren las posibilidades de sostenibilidad en el municipio, es decir, incrementando el presupuesto orientado a servicios de agua y saneamiento. En, en el ámbito comunitario trabaja todos los días básicamente en este proceso tiene muchas posibilidades de éxito posteriormente viene la que viene y se aquí posteriormente la postactivación que se orienta a la implementación de actividades WASH Ahora, en el ámbito nacional, se orienta a la réplica, la escala y la sostenibilidad. Para comentarles, no sé si me están escuchando. No sé si me están escuchando, disculpen. La alerta. Sí, perdón, ¿me escuchan? Sí, si puedes ir cerrando. Ok, gracias. Sí. Ok, entonces en el ámbito nacional se tienen diferentes acciones de réplica, escala y sostenibilidad. La siguiente, por favor. Y en este, en este caso se ha trabajado con más de 300 mil participantes, con 822 comunidades atendidas y más de 60 mil hogares. Algo importante acá es de mencionar que se, el costo de la intervención es de 37 dólares por familia. Y esto se puede utilizar en situaciones de emergencia, tal como se aplicó durante las emergencias de ETA y OTA que afectaron el país en el 2020. Y estos son algunos de los resultados que se ha obtenido y que ustedes los tienen en pantalla. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Edgar. Very interesting how you are uh, in, in this, like I would say, uh, improved CLTS. You are being able to um, go further and not just only uh, in, in sanitation, but introduce hygiene also. And again, as, as we saw in his diagram, uh, community participation, again, it's key. So you, you now are following the thread of, the, of, 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 the, of this journey today, right? Uh, so last but not least, I would like to introduce to you um, Miriam uh, Dorfeuil, who is technology doesn't help sometimes. Uh, yeah, so Miriam uh, Dorfeuil, she is um, she's the director of the National Observatory Observatory of Potable Water and Sanitation at the Dinepa in Haiti, and uh, Miriam will share a case of Siepa which is a monitoring tool for WASH in rural context that serves for making better decisions, but also to innovate, as you told me, right? So. Thank you, Laura. Hello, I'm Miriam Dofay, as Lauren said. I'm here to present you briefly our uh, integrated water and sanitation information system. Uh, developed on a water platform by DINEPA. As you know, DINEPA is a government uh, agency for wash sector in Haiti. Next, the slide, please. Before I continue on our SEPA, I want to take a little bit moment to talk about a CWASH techn a technical cooperation we have with IDB. And uh, we have one of the components of SIWASH. Uh, we, we, we have an impact of our system. We, uh, this is a component we're going to improve the CEPA scope and uh, uh, by adding a new model uh, for planning and executive execution of uh, infrastructure uh, works. And with this part, we, Dinepa and partners, will be able to know where exactly they, they need to increase the access to safe water in a rural sector and urban also. And uh, in, in, to achieve the, the SDG uh, indicators. Next slide. 
uh, now I show you the the scope of the CEPA and many details. And this picture show you the our homepage of uh, the uh, of system. Next time. Uh, this is an important uh, uh, slide I need to explain you because uh, you can show, you can see the evolution of our data because uh, from 2017, we, we can have only the, the water point in the map, but uh, with the evolution, we have uh, include the water system. And now we can uh, add, we had the, the subscribers uh, in the map with the system, with the water point, and also we can show the as the commercial aspect also in one system. It's very interesting to mention that because uh, in the past we didn't have this. And uh, we are also, in other new tools we are working on is the assess active because uh, uh, from Dinepa, when we are working on the infrastructure system, we don't have the story of the, the intervention. Now we combine many information from each other, uh, uh, employees of uh, each system. Now we put them on one system and in the future, anyone can has access with this information and continue the intervention. This is uh, all by direction can monitor the data from the system. Next slide. Here, I want to talk about the, some results we, we had now. And as a result, uh, Dinepa and partners will be able to have uh, a, to monitor the, the system performance. A, a, a for sustainability and take the best decision for the waste sector in Haiti. And uh, at this moment, as uh, an example, we are working on the a new program with World Bank. They are using this uh, information to build this, uh, to prepare this uh, a new program, wash program in Haiti. And, and we expect also to our partners, existing and future partners for was sector in Haiti, they can use this information to contribute uh, to the access uh, accessibility wash, uh, wa water in Haiti. And because uh, we really want to achieve the SDGs uh, indicators, but uh, we are very, very low to uh, obtain the, the, the result but uh, we really want to uh, have the information available to take the best decision to complete that. And I want uh, uh, to, con to thank our donors, next slide, our partners for your, their contribution to our system. Thank you so much. Can you stay here? So let's say so now uh, I want to thank all the all the panelists for their for their very interesting cases. Um, thank you for bearing with us. We had some technological issues, as you saw. So thank you for 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 your patience. Um, now um, uh, I also want to invite uh, our audience online uh, to send their questions if they have through the platform through Pathable through the chat of Pathable. And uh, now we will come to like a, a, a panel uh, conversation with uh, with uh, Miriam. Uh, Isela and our online uh, online uh, colleagues, and um, I want to start. Um, let me pick because I want to go to storytelling. If you if you are okay, um, so I, I I want to invite any of you to tell us in one minute the development value of water through an experience uh, of a person or family that has participated on one of your projects so to go let's let's go to the communities now so who wants to go first not everybody okay, <laughs> okay. okay. well um, one example we, we want I would like to share with you is it isn't not just about the family it's more about our the implementation of the experience that we have shown here it was a, a community called Puente Chape. 
is in, in the district of Cascas. And they started the process with um, sort of six hours per day per household. And after the process, now they have 24 hour services where they have um, chlorine, they are providing chlorinated water. Their default rate is almost zero. And they have uh, an operator which is, which is working with the community for about five years now. And I think this is an example of what we can achieve when working with them. And the one thing that is important to, sh to show is that these are social processes. And most of us are engineers. I am an engineer and we want results, goals, time, but social processes are different. Our processes also, but take time. We need to be sure that the amount of investment in time will provide you results. And when articulating all of the actors and the same in, the, in one equation, it's not easy, but it, we can assure you that these results will last not only forever, but you can achieve sustainability at the end. Thank you, Isela. What a comprehensive answer. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else want to share? Uh, colleagues online, do you want to share in, in, in one minute uh, a story of a person? You? Yeah. Miriam? Okay. Well, Let's give the word, the, 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 the okay. floor to Miriam, and then we can go online. But I need to explain you briefly uh, our experiences to implement this system in Haiti because we talk about a government ANC uh, because it's not easy to, to, to change the, what they are doing in the past to have a, a system on, of monitoring uh, of data also. So we, we, we start at the, uh, the, the at the low level to, 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 to track the data and, and so on, uh, explain the, the regional level, what they can do with this data and the national level. Is the, this way we are uh, taking to, to have the, the, the big system we have now. Any, um, what would you say it's a challenge uh, in working like with your colleagues at the government level? What would yes, you say? because uh, one, when they, they have, uh, many a uh, year to do the same thing is not easy to change it for for them they don't have uh, a, a, a a to report any data or what they do it in the field and now we ask to they need to mostly to submit the 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 data on the tools and it's not it, for the beginning is is it wasn't a easy to do but for this moment, this they feel the 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 spot, but it's so they feel empowered. Yes. Um. Someone online. Do, does someone online want to share a story, or I can go to other um, questions? I can. I can share a story. <laughs> um. Can you hear me? Loud. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um. All right. So one of the stories that I have, it's uh actually a similar group of women, right? Not exactly the ones you saw in the picture, but some a group of women very similar who got together uh, to be part of a puppet making workshop in their community. And they built relationships with each other. They became so solidified with one another and started to talk about the water issues in their community that they, they decided to overthrow <laughs> the water user, the water user committee that was in place uh, led by men. Uh, they were unsatisfied with it and and they were like we're gonna take over we're gonna take we're gonna replace it and we're gonna lead it and so and so this is a story of of empowerment this is a story of gender equality uh that was not really an expected result or expected consequence right we're talking about we were we wanted to change to see changes in behaviors you know very specific behaviors but this went beyond beyond our expectations and and so now these women are, are leading their own uh, water user committee, you know, doing the repairs to make the 
water service provision in their community function uh, as it should. That's the story. Thank you, Anna. Great story. Uh, just okay, maybe. Um, and then I, I will just. I, I'm not gonna follow the the the, the script anymore, uh, <laughs> because I, I think I, I think I would like to to start opening like to, to questions from the public and to interact with the panelists. I think we are in a cozy space, and I think it 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 we can do that. Um, so I, I just want to ask Jusuke if uh, Jusuke in 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 one of your um, how about you in in Lima when you went to the to the site to this very remote site? Have you heard any story of any person? How how I mean how was the 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 the, the change of the system? But now they, before they had to walk very long distances to go and and get water. But uh, with with the with the program that you uh, uh, did there, what, have you seen? And I, tell us a story. Ah uh, yes, I I I went I went to the site where I they bring the water bags. The yeah, the, the families there uh, talk to talk to us that uh, we, um, we picture water and the, to the other uh, spot spot of the the tanker truck. I they have to have to walk one one hour or two hour and uh, take a, a water buckets uh, and then come back to the uh, their home. So, but but they by bring some smaller bottle of um, water uh, it, it is very easier to carry and uh, so the they yeah they, they appreciate us that how to say i uh, that, that it it makes their um life convenient or a bit um better uh in 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 the sense of the the, the, the um taking care of their life so that's the kind of yeah simple story just like a follow-up question before i open really to the public um how in, in in this uh type of projects how do you see sustainability there it's okay ah uh, yes i that that's a very great question i uh, yeah this the um i talked with set uh, how, how uh you you know um realize this uh, sustainability of the project the set is going uh, doing this project as a just a social uh, responsibility so but the um this is the uh, how to say um the, the free to go uh, project so this is the uh it's it's very important to ensure the sustainability financial and financial sustainability um to maintain the project in the sense that set apart is that the i is um focusing on or the the work on the um this non-revenue non-revenue water um issue the the, yes, the uh, Sedapa is struggling with the uh, taking tariff from the uh, water users. That the, if the, it, it can take a more more tariff or the more uh, the adequate tariff uh, for uh, from the you know existing water system, this is that it can take uh, revenue adequate revenue to um, um, the approaching those uh, vulnerable. Um, populations. That is a strategy of set up. So the, uh, it, this is the, the approach of the um, ensuring sustainability. Uh, so now maybe we can we can really open the the, the floor to questions uh, from from you guys from the public uh, if you want. Uh, here, Chuban. Ah, right, yeah, online. Or please, uh, if on if you have questions online, please. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Juan Pablo Romero. Uh, I'm a consultant and uh, I'm from Colombia and I work in applied economics and collective action platforms. My question is for either one of you and it has to do with the design of the interventions. The possibilities of the cooperation institutions are different from the local and the government entities. So how can you develop interventions that uh, also strengthen public institutions because sometimes the interventions can seem like islands that cannot be uh, you know reproduced by the public sector so how can you improve empower public institutions so the success that you have can be um, replicated by the public sector 
thank you for your for your question. So anybody wants to jump in? Yeah, I could go. I could go. So uh, in, in the Lasso's Yagua program, uh, some of our implementing partners are actually the governments. Uh, that's the case in Mexico, where the Comisión Estatal de Agua, and so the like the state level commission is actually the one in charge of putting in place the infrastructure, uh, providing the wash services, and then another implementing partner uh, uh, complements that intervention with uh, with the SABC approach. Same for Paraguay. And um, this sort of like goes back to what Gisela was saying about how collaboration is very, can be a challenge, right? It can be difficult, it can be slow, it takes time. But once all the jigsaw pieces are together, uh, it brings you much further. Um, and and, and in, in that sense, to ask, to answer more your question, Juan Pablo, uh, bringing, bringing them along in, in, in this journey of intervention and like, showing them how we design and how we collaborate and what are the results that it brings and 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 piecing our part of the intervention that's like the island one with their and piggybacking into them um you know hopefully also makes them see other ways of doing it and and we're right now we're also equipping those public institutions with tools uh some of them have taken trainings also on sabc for example so they're they're, they're trying to see how they can um, integrate uh, some of some elements of this approach into their ways of doing things in 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 the way they do like their social aspects of their engineering works. Um, so yeah, working working together. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Anybody else would like to give like a like maybe one minute uh, answer to his question or we or is anybody does anybody have any other question okay thank you hi thank you for these really great examples of of success i was curious about the financial sustainability aspect and just wondered if you guys have examples of of good revenue making or or any like innovative finance frameworks that you've used or found interesting working on this sector. Does anybody want to jump on that question? On that to answer that question? Yeah, financial sustainability. Um, uh, are you asking about financial? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> in terms of the community, or in terms of all of the rural sector. Different approaches like projects that have been like revenue making, or or is it all non for, for profit? Um, and until like grant based, or are there any I don't know blended finance models or result based finance? Uh, just wondered, it might be the case that it's not, uh, it's not the answer, just no. Mm -hmm. but was curious about if there's innovation. Okay, I, I can go ahead. Part and you Go complement. Ahead, I'll, I'll... Well, it, I think it depends on, on the context of the country. For example, in Peru, um, we don't have subsidies for rural population. In, in general, for, for example, for the urban population, they have like subsidies between um, the, uh, parts of the city with higher income to the lowest income uh, population, right? In rural communities, uh, because most of them are all poor people we are not used to um, they have no they haven't established subsidies but um they have we know many cases that um, um have houses or, or community organizations that have huge revenues in terms of sustainability financial sustainability and what they have built is an approach um, so aligned with the level of income of um, seasonal income they have because most of the, those population are based on agriculture um, and um, basically agriculture um, 
um, communities, right? So when they harvest, for example, two times a year, they make like an extra uh, amount of money to compensate the, um, the monthly amount they, they put. So at the end of the period, the, the community has achieved financial sustainability. They have gained income, for example, to build their um, the, the office for the water, the water facility. They have money to buy um, um, some spare parts to make some uh, repair, uh, repair um, mostly maybe not bigger uh, um, expansion of the systems because they require a higher amount of money, but sufficient to not depend of the, on the local government or not depend on nobody else um, in terms of um, assuring they have um, enough money to sustain all the provision needed by this local community. Thank you, Stella. Thank you. That. So we have a, a question from uh, someone online, um, and that is uh, if we have contemplated including uh, ma uh, risk management and disasters and climate change in, in one of our interventions. Uh, maybe Edgar. Edgar, are you there? Yes. Thank you, Ernek. Thank you. Very kind. Sorry, I, I had to turn off my video. So. Uh, in terms of our our intervention, all the all the every activity that we we do, actually it, it has uh, the prevision of, or or mitigation of risk risk mitigation in terms of the of the different activities that we do in in terms of the satoso. It it includes, for example, the coordination with the municipalities and coordination with the health ministry in, in Guatemala. But besides to that, the every implementation includes, for example, uh, Satosa was, was implemented during uh, emergency situations. Uh, for example, in the ETA and IOTA events. So uh, I don't, uh, I can say that each intervention that we do actually has it has it in 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 terms of our, our work and for example the intervention could could be in could take less time than than it could um, for example it takes three or four months to implement a uh, hygiene sanitation and and water and water quality uh, and it is including the municipality and everything so probably that can be part of the response in uh, Ernest and colleagues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edgar. Uh, is that, oh, please, yes. I like this. Ask hola, hola, hola. ¿Sí? Yeah, es, it, that's, eso es solo para, el, ah, para yeah, los okay. colegas en línea. Bueno, eh, yo quería hacer un comentario en relación a la medición que se hace en los distintos países en Latinoamérica tanto del acceso al agua potable como derecho humano y al saneamiento. ¿no? Eh, ¿En qué medida esta medición que se hace eh, tiene como un punto específico la calidad del agua? Si esta agua a la que la población está accediendo es de calidad, ¿la pueden tomar? ¿O solamente dicen, ah, ya tiene agua en un grifo, pero luego si vamos a la comunidad no pueden tomar esa agua? Y lo mismo para la medición que están haciendo los gobiernos con el saneamiento, no solo se trata de que no haya defecación al aire libre, ¿no? porque si miden eso como saneamiento, pues nos estamos mintiendo un poco porque la contaminación va a seguir de los acuíferos y de las fuentes de agua. Entonces, si se tendría que hacer la medición, tendría que ser muy a detalle y diferenciar ¿No? No, estamos cumpliendo los objetivos del desarrollo 2030, pero ¿en qué, en qué, ¿con qué calidad? ¿no? Si se llega al tratamiento eh, de las aguas residuales y luego se va a, a la economía circular, entonces que no sean estadísticas mentirosas de los gobiernos, sino que sean reales 
y que en esa realidad nos pongamos metas que podamos medir realmente y alcanzar y, y doblar los esfuerzos para que no se contaminen nuestras aguas y todos tengamos derecho humano a acceder a ellas. ¿En qué medida ustedes han visto que, que esas mediciones son reales o no? Somebody wants to ask um, I can I can take it, René. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. Um, sí, pues el, el, el objetivo de desarrollo sostenible, el 6, el, y la meta 6.1 y 6.2, um, es el Joint Monitoring Program, el que se encarga de, de hacer estimados globales, ¿no? Eh, sobre el avance de servicios de agua y de saneamiento. Eh, y bueno, y de higiene también. Y dentro de esa medición, eh, tienen una clasificación sobre el, el nivel de servicio de agua que realmente le llega a los hogares eh, y que incluye eh, justamente desde, desde, desde el 2015 el, el, la calidad, la calidad de agua y la continuidad. Es una escalera de servicio y el nivel más alto es, es manejado de forma segura, se llama, ¿no? Entonces el... Eh, el hogar tiene que recibir agua a su, en su casa, ¿no? en el, tiene, la llave tiene que estar en el predio, ¿no? eh, bueno, puede ser una llave o, o otro, otra fuente, eh, pero tiene que tener eh, niveles de calidad, tiene que tener cero coliformes, ¿no? eh, libre de contaminantes fecales y químicos prioritarios eh, y, eh, y continuidad. ¿no? Igual para el saneamiento, hay una manera de medirlo también, tiene una escalera de servicio y el nivel más alto, que es el que, al que queremos llegar, ¿no? toma en cuenta eh, el manejo de los, del flujo fecal. Eh, ¿no? Entonces, no, si la, no simplemente es acabar con la, efe, la defecación al aire libre, que, que sería como la prioridad para empezar, ¿no? pero también es llevar a la población a, a un nivel de saneamiento manejado de forma segura, como lo clasifican. Este, ahora, los gobiernos integran esto en sus maneras de, de, de medir la cobertura. Eh, en lazos de agua, por ejemplo, nosotros hacemos eh, eh, encuestas hogares en donde, en donde medimos estos aspectos. ¿no? Entonces, no puedo hablar por los gobiernos, pero por lo menos eh, nosotros lo hacemos en nuestro, en nuestro monitoreo. Gracias, Ana. ¿Alguien más quisiera complementar? Ah, hay una pregunta de eh, Giovanna. The mic, please. Good afternoon. I'm sorry because I'm not going to speak uh, in in English because I'm better in in Spanish. So, eh, bueno, mi nombre es Guido Eduardo. Yo yo soy el jefe nacional de la DINEPA en Haití. Eh, bueno, mi colega. Eh, ha ido, bueno, ocupó ya ahora mismo mi puesto, el puesto que yo había ocupado en 2012. Y hay una precisión que yo quería añadir con respecto al sistema nuevo, joven, que estamos llevando a cabo, porque es un sistema que lleva nada más dos años y todavía eh, quedan muchas cosas por hacer. Una de las cosas más fundamentales, Miriam, ahorita había hablado de la dificultad que hemos ido teniendo para sensibilizar, para darle más conciencia a, a los colegas nuestros. Pero bueno, la meta principal es ahora ver cómo pudiéramos sensibilizar a las autoridades locales, porque por ley la DINEPA tiene que traspasar la gestión de los servicios de agua y saneamiento a las autoridades locales. Y entonces, por eso que tenemos que, por lo menos, hacer la integración, digamos, y la concientización de las autoridades, los alcaldes, eh, los representantes en diferentes comunidades, para que ellos eh, formen parte de esa familia eh, y también puedan tomar decisiones en base a lo existente. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Guido. I'm, te voy a integrar al panel. I'm going to integrate, I'm going to make you join the panel. I, I would like to have a, make a follow-up questions, on, uh, una, una pregunta de seguimiento en eso. Eh, ¿cuál, es, cuál, ¿Cuál crees tú que es el reto mayor de DINEPA 
which is the biggest uh, challenge for the, for you guys at Dinepa uh, to really interact with the with the local level. ¿Cuál es el cuál es el mayor reto para inter interactuar con los y para convencer sí. a los gobiernos locales? Eh, primero eh, eh, sensibilizarlo con respeto a la gestión de los recursos hídricos, porque a veces tú te encuentras con unos alcaldes que son comerciantes, digamos, de, de leña o, o de carbón vegetal. Y esto disminuye, digamos, el manto freático o la producción de agua a nivel de los manantiales. Y, y también a nivel nacional, uno de los retos más grandes es pensar en la diversificación, en la diversificación digamos, de los recursos hídricos. Dejar de pensar en la captación de los manantiales o en el manto freático, sino pensar en las aguas superficiales. El difunto presidente con quien yo tenía, digamos, mucho contacto y también eh, había, eh, digamos, eh, arrancado esa iniciativa con la construcción de la primera presa que tenemos, que es, que es la presa Marión. Y a partir de esa presa Marión, eh, con la ayuda financiera del Banco Interamericano de Desarrollo, vamos a eh, hacer eh, una red entre tres comunas y ver cómo esas, eh, esas autoridades de, de esas tres comunas pudieran, digamos, tener un conocimiento mejor sobre el sistema que estamos desarrollando. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Thank you. ¿Alguna otra? Yo, yo, no, yo no quería tomar <laughs> el asiento de mi colega, bueno, pero yo now, le he pedido disculpas, now claro. you are out of the panel. If you just hear the panel for a minute, now you are not in the panel anymore. Uh, any other question uh, from, the, from, from the audience here? Or I can keep asking questions. Online? Guys, no, don't be shy. So um, now I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, some, some other questions in terms of um, um, I, maybe Edgar or, or Anna, you want to, to jump in. Uh, in your cases, behavior change was a central element. Uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge you have encountered in making these interventions effective? And how do you assess the effectiveness of, of behavior change? Edgar, maybe you want to start. Gracias, Ernenek. Voy a, voy a intervenir en este caso. La verdad es de que cada intervención que se hace en términos de cambio de comportamiento tiene que este, modificarlo y verse en resultados en términos de monitoreo. Y si estos resultados en el monitoreo, eh, digamos en términos de gente que está aplicando las... las las prácticas de higiene, gente que tiene construido un sanitario, gente que tiene acceso a agua de calidad. Entonces, esto es un, es un elemento de, de, que visualiza o que evidencia que el, que el cambio de comportamiento efectivamente está teniendo el resultado. Porque si se están haciendo actividades de cambio de comportamiento y estas no se ven en términos de resultado, va a ser difícil este, poderlo digamos, determinar. Entonces, eh, digamos que si al final del, del día una comunidad antes, cuatro meses antes, tenía, tenía digamos, un 70% de cobertura en saneamiento y después de la actividad tiene 100% de saneamiento, esto es un resultado como, como evidente y como evidencia de, de que el las acciones que se están teniendo a nivel comunitario están teniendo ese resultado. Entonces, eh, si las personas antes no tenían un lavamanos y ahora ya lo tienen, esto es un ejemplo también de que están, estas, estas están teniendo resultados. Es decir, eh, la metodología per se es interesante, es novedosa y tiene que dar resultados. Entonces, al final del día, esto es, esto es lo que cuenta, ¿verdad? Y y efectivamente, si esto va, va teniendo resultados, puede irse escalando a manera de, de municipios. 
ayuda a que los mismos municipios se fortalezcan y ayuda también a que el Estado asuma nuevas, nuevos mecanismos de, de intervención. Entonces, esto sería más o menos lo que, lo que pienso y lo que se, se ha evidenciado en, en cuanto al trabajo que tenemos hasta este punto de más de, de, de 800 comunidades, 62 mil familias, etc. ¿no? Cambio. Y ahora voy a ir a ti, Miriam. Um, you mencionaste a mí cuando estábamos preparando la sesión que... You, you, you think that these kind of systems that you presented, it's not only for decision making, but also you mentioned innovation. Exactly. Can you share examples of, of, of innovation that had happened thanks to this system? The innovation is uh, we, with the system, we can integrate any other system on one uh, system. For example, we have another uh, platform you are using for the uh, commercial aspect we we integrate it in the our system or uh, someone we will access in sepa can show the 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 information about the commercial aspect uh, and they can see the 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 commercial aspect for the the day they 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 make the they can they can see the the intervention for the day where they are And uh, we we are also integrated in other uh, platform uh, uh, in our system is according the technical uh, uh, part with uh, uh, all the the water system in AT the in French we talk about cadastre a uh, technical cadastre and we that this information integrate that uh, easily. Uh, in our uh, uh, system and we can show uh, without to uh, to do again the, the the work the data collection on the field we can uh, just uh, implement it in on our system is very uh, in interesting to to mention that because uh, and we are not uh, need to do everything in a other platform we if you have something uh, Uh, out in, in a water, we can integrate it uh, on it. It's one of the in innovation I can say for us. Thank you very much. And with, with this, I'm going to close the, the panel discussion. Uh, and uh, I want maybe a big applause for the panelists. Thank you very much. Um, Now we are we are almost at the approaching the end of the session. Uh, thank you very much for here for, for being here with us. Uh, but before uh, we have a Grisel Medina uh, from the uh, National Water Commission Conagua in Mexico, who will offer a critical reflection and a call to action for for us. Grisel, please. Muchas gracias, Ernenek. Buenas tardes en Estocolmo. Buenos días, países hermanos de Latinoamérica y el Caribe. Reciban un caluroso saludo por parte del director general de la Comisión Nacional del Agua de México y de la gerente y equipo de la Gerencia de Cooperación Internacional. Concluyen las presentaciones de esta sesión denominada Maximizando el Valor del Agua para el Desarrollo, que expuso valiosas experiencias de la región. Agradezco la participación de las y los panelistas, manifestando mi reconocimiento al grupo organizador de la Semana Mundial del Agua de Estocolmo y del foco de las Américas y el Caribe. Como se ha puntualizado, de acuerdo con los datos de la Organización de las Naciones Unidas, en el mundo, una de cada tres personas no cuenta con acceso a agua salud. Dos de cada cinco personas no disponen de una instalación básica para lavado de mano con aguas y más de 673 millones de personas no hacen uso de instalaciones sanitarias, cuyo propósito es atender las medidas de higiene personal. Aproximadamente 160 millones de personas en Latinoamérica viven en zonas rurales, de los cuales 20 millones se encuentran en comunidades donde se carece de servicios de agua potable y saneamiento, lo cual se traduce en altos índices de morbilidad causada por enfermedades generadas por el consumo de agua insalubre. Es por ello 
que surge la necesidad de implementar sistemas de saneamiento y de abastecimiento con tecnologías no convencionales y de instalaciones mejoradas. Esto para abatir las consecuencias de servicios de mala calidad que repercuten en la salud de las personas y especialmente de nuestras niñas y niños. Como se expresó en el más reciente Día Mundial del Agua, la demanda de este recurso ha aumentado, incrementando su uso de manera excesiva y como consecuencia de ello, su contaminación. Para enfrentarlo, resulta primordial incrementar la inversión en programas de agua, saneamiento e higiene, con un enfoque de sostenibilidad. Solo así, se logrará cumplir con las metas del Objetivo de Desarrollo Sostenible 6, es decir, Garantizar la disponibilidad de agua y su gestión sostenible y el saneamiento para todos y todas. Es importante enfatizar que la participación de las y los panelistas ha demostrado que la generación de concientización se puede manifestar de diferentes formas. A través del arte social, como lo expuso Lazos de Agua, mediante folletos educativos y agua que se entrega en comunidades aisladas, como lo realiza la Agencia de Cooperación Internacional de Japón en Perú, con un monitoreo comunitario como se hace en Guatemala y con la revisión de ajustes y tarifas como los proponen en Zunas. El agua no debe ser una fuente de conflicto, sino de cooperación multisectorial, por lo que se vuelve esencial que trabajemos juntos para lograr una correcta y justa gestión del agua en América Latina y el Caribe. Por ello, les invito a tomar como ejemplo las acciones expuestas por las y los panelistas con el objetivo de incentivarnos a explorar y localizar soluciones para enfrentar los retos y enfocar nuestros esfuerzos para que nuestros países puedan tener acceso en forma eficiente, eficaz y justa al recurso hídrico. Avancemos juntos. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Grisel, and uh, thank you all of you for joining us today. Uh, it was a, a real pleasure having you, having you, us, uh, having you with us today. Um, thank you to the panelists, uh, for those that came to Stockholm and for those that joined us online. Uh, and uh, please, for those, if there is still people online, please uh, uh, feel uh, we have uh, some surveys. Yeah, Joanna, do we have a survey online? So please fill the survey if, if you, if, please fill it, it will help us to to improve the, the, the future sessions and uh, have a great afternoon and rest of your week. Thank you very much.